At Apollinaire's grave, in three parts, this poem. One, I visited Père Lachaise to look for the remains of Apollinaire, the day the U.S. president appeared in France for the grand conference of heads of state. So, let it be the airport at Blue Orly on a winter's day, a springtime clarity in the air over Paris, Eisenhower winging in from his American graveyard, and over the freakish, froggy graves at Père Lachaise, an illusory mist as thick as marijuana smoke. Peter Orlovsky and I walked softly through Père Lachaise. We both knew we would die, and so held temporary hands tenderly in a city-like miniature eternity. Roads and street signs, rocks and hills, names on everybody's house. Looking for the lost address of a notable Frenchman of the void, to pay our tender crime of homage to his helpless men here and lay my temporary American howl on top of his silent calligram for him to read between the lines with X-ray eyes of a poet as he by miracle had read his own death lyric in the Seine. I hope some wild kid monk lay his pamphlet on my grave for God to read me on cold winter nights in heaven. Already our hands have vanished from that place. My hand writes now in a room in Paris Gilles Lecoeur. Ah, William, what grit in the brain you had. What's death? I walked all over the cemetery and still couldn't find your grave. What did you mean by that fantastic cranial bandage in your poems? You can't drive autos into a six-foot grave, though the universe is mausoleum big enough for anything. The universe is a graveyard, and I walk around alone in here, knowing that Apollinaire was on the same street 50 years ago, his madness is only around the corner, and Genet is with us, stealing books. The West is at war again, and whose lucid suicide will set it all right? Guillaume, Guillaume, how I envy your fame, your accomplishment for American letters, your zone with its long, crazy line of nonsense about death. Come out of the grave and talk through the door of my mind. Issue new series of images, oceanic haikus, blue taxi cabs in Moscow, Negro statues of Buddha, Pray for me on the phonograph record of your former existence with a long, sad voice and strophes of deep, sweet music, sad and scratchy as World War I. I've eaten the blue carrots you sent out of the grave and Van Gogh's ear and the maniac peyote of Artaud and will walk down the streets of New York in the long black cloak of French poetry, improvising our conversation in Paris at Père Lachaise and the future poem that takes its inspiration from the light bleeding into your grave. Part two. Here in Paris, I am your guest, O oh friendly shade. The absent hand of Max Jacob, Picasso in youth, bearing me a tube of Mediterranean. Myself attending Rousseau's old red banquet, I ate his violin. Great party at the Bateau Lavoir, not mentioned in the textbooks of Algeria. Zara in the Bois de Boulogne, explaining the alchemy of the machine guns of the cuckoos. He weeps, translating me into Swedish well-dressed in a violet tie, black pants, an expert beat generation motorcyclist, a sweet purple beard which emerged from his face like the moss hanging from the walls of anarchism. He spoke endlessly of his quarrels with André Breton, whom he had one day helped trim his golden mustache. Old Blaise Sendrars received me into his study and spoke wearily of the enormous length of Siberia. Jacques Vachet invited me to inspect his terrible collection of pistols. Poor Cocteau, saddened by the once marvelous Radiguet, at his last thought I fainted. Rigaud with a letter of introduction to death. And Gide praised the telephone and other remarkable inventions. We agreed in principle, though he gossiped of lavender underwear. But for all that, he drank deeply of the grass of Whitman and was intrigued by all lovers named Colorado. Princes of America arriving with their arms full of shrapnel and baseball. Guillaume, the world so easy, to fight so easy. Did you know that the great political classicists would invade Montparnasse with not one sprig of prophetic laurel to green their foreheads, not one pulse of green in their pillows, no leaf left from their wars? Mayakovsky arrived and revolted. Three. Came back, sat on a tomb and stared at your rough men here. A piece of thin granite like an unfinished phallus. A cross faded into the rock, two poems on the stone. One cœur renversé, other, habituez-vous comme moi à les prodigues que je lance, Guillaume Apollinaire de Kostrovitsky, 
someone placed a jam bottle filled with daisies in a five and ten cent cereales type of ceramic rose. Happy little tomb with flowers and overturned heart under a fine mossy tree beneath which I sat. Snaky trunk, summer boughs and leaves, umbrella over the men here, nobody there. Et quelle voix sinistre, lule, Guillaume qui est tout devenu. His next door neighbor is a tree. There, underneath, the crossbones heap, yellow cranium, perhaps, and the printed poems, alcohols in my pocket, his voice in the museum, a six-foot personal plot. Now footsteps walk the gravel. Middle-aged man comes by, stares at his name, moves toward the crematory. Same sky rolls over through the clouds as Mediterranean days on the Riviera during war, drinking, Apollo in love, eating occasional opium, he'd taken the light. One must have felt the shock in Saint-Germain when he went out. Jacob and Picasso coughing in the dark. A bandage unrolled and the skull left still on a bed. Outstretched pudgy fingers, the mystery and ego gone. A bell tolls in the steeple down the street. Birds warble in chestnut trees. Femi Bremont sleeps nearby. Christ hangs big chested and sexy in their tomb. My cigarette smokes in my lap and fills the page with smoke and flames. An ant runs over my corduroy sleeve. The tree I lean on grows slowly. Bushes and branches upstarting through the tombs. One silky spider web gleaming on granite. I am buried here and sit by my grave beneath the tree. Paris, 1958.